Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, we've got one system from the user Emmanuel Garcia in Discord, so a massive thank you to them for sending in this system. And their system is called the Kalostin system, I hope I'm saying that right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see what they have prepared for us. So it should be there, there we go, okay. Right, we got some reading, we got a lot of reading, whoa. Oh my god, look at all that. That is a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's have a little look at what we have here. So there it is. Okay, so looks like we've only got a couple, but there's a lot of reading here. So the Colossal System is a star system that takes place around 3.7 billion years into the future, along with the Brasden and Connor system, which I've already made, by the way. It's located around 26 light years away from the redacted binary system to the west of it, and 48 light years from the solar system in the northeastern side of it, which at this point would have changed a lot, the increase of sun's luminosity and the death of all life on Earth, which had happened long prior to the distancing of the Dallacine and Lindian family. A massive group of stars that were born from the same nebula dust cloud, making them all stellar siblings of each, um, with Colossian and Bradzin are uh, part of uh, the spike Bradzin itself forming. I'm getting a bit confused. Uh... I think he's relating to his other systems. I don't know if we've seen these ones or not, though. Um, yeah. Um, itself or being a result of a massive death of a massive... Okay. The star itself, Colossum... Okay, so that's actually about this system now. So, it's an F-type main sequence star, specifically being F9V. It is around 3% more massive than the Sun. It's orbited by five planets, and three of them being terrestrials and the others being Jovians. Oh, yeah, speaking of them, I guess it's time to talk about them individually. Okay, so the star... There it is there. Obviously bigger than the sum of its stats there. Okie dokie. First of the planets. We've got Elis. Or Elis. It's got some craters on it. It looks pretty cool. A hot desert-like world being the first planet from Colostin. There isn't much to aside it. The uh, fact it lacks moons, which honestly makes uh, sense because why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's that. Next up we have got Mossa Mossa Dem. Okay. In a less extreme version of Venus that is orbited by three moons. There is also evidence that it was once covered with oceans of liquid water and obviously got bored away as a result of uh, the planet getting more or the star getting more luminous over time. Basically, cooking Mosrin to death, leading to the way it is now. As for its moons, um, I honestly do not need to explain what they are other than being pretty colourful. So here they are. Okay, whoa. And the third moon over there. Very fancy, okay. Let's have a look at the planet itself underneath the, uh, the clouds. So there it is there. Okay. Cool. 149 degrees. So yeah, nowhere near Venus levels. Uh, next up, we have got this object here. An Earth-like planet that is also orbited by two moons. Uh, it also could potentially have complex life, though not yet confirmed, despite appearing to have yellowish-looking vegetation. It is also at least 32% more massive than the planet Earth, which of course would make it have stronger gravity. This explains why it has a much thicker atmosphere than the planet Earth because of what I said previously. As for its moons, um, its large Sosaurus, which is there, um, as well as so I've lost my place in the text. Um, uh, okay, so it's the most massive moon could potentially have ice caps indicating it is possibly once had liquid water, oceans, as well as an atmosphere in the past, although it's just speculative. And the other moon, the less smaller moon, well, there isn't much to say about it other than it being deep green in colour. So here it is, the owner. There he is, okay. Next up we got uh, Seca Lior. Let's actually have a look, before we move on, let's actually have a look at the uh, planet itself as well. So there you go, so it's got the greeny vegetation, yeah, as he mentioned. Very nice, thick atmosphere. There you are, okay. Moving on over here. So we have a gas world, okay. So, a sign or teal coloured sub Neptune that is orbited by at least a dozen moons, though we are not sure if that's the case because it possibly have more than a dozen. The planet itself is around eight times more massive than planet Earth, which would make it a super Earth if it wasn't like Neptune in composition. As for his moons, um, well, unfortunately, since it has a lot, I won't explain the couple that are most interesting. So, vi vi Vimtone uh, labels. So, the orange one here. Okay. Also known as Cheetah Moon, hilariously enough, because its bright orange and yellow coloured surface 
So it's the fifth moon. There isn't really much to say about it other than its funny nickname. So, Vimto. Um, okay, so next up we have Warupa. So that's the green one here. It has a deep ocean under the thick layer of ice. It has actually made up most of its competition, which is honestly saying a lot because uh, the other three ice moons don't have much of a deep ocean under their ice crusts. Okay. So we'll have a quick have a look at the other moons as well. Got some weird square craters. That is very strange. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and then the, all the other moons. That one's a huge crater. So there they all are here. Cool. Okay. And then moving on to the... This is the last of the planets. Okay. And there's a lot of reading. So. Oh my god. Look at the moons. Whoa. So. Sulia. A purple gas giant with lime green bands that is orbited by a lot of moons. A large proportion of them being actually remnants of a large deceased moon. The planet itself is around... 0.23% the mass of Jupiter, as well as being less massive than Saturn, making it a super Neptune or sub Saturn instead. It is also the most distant planet from the star for obvious reasons, and of course has the most moons. Speaking of them, it's now time to talk about them as well as the other ones in one grouping. All right, so Renonium. Renium? Uh, oh my god, uh, that's this one here. Has a chlorine moon and a thick atmosphere. It also has 3% the mass of Earth, which fortunately makes it enough to be have said atmosphere and chlorine oceans. So next up we've got Joseph as a thick atmosphere. Where's that? So that's this one here. But not to the extent of Renium. It also has more massive than said previous moon, but compared to Earth, it only has around 4% the mass of it. It also has a water ocean under its icy crust. So that wraps up the inner moons. Now for the outer ones. So next up we've got Sulia. Oh my god, where do we find that? There's a lot to try and find. Where is it? Oh man, I can't even see it. Oh, wait, hang on, no, uh, hang on, um, sh sh uh, okay, uh, actually, look, most of the outer moons are actually remnants of a large now deceased moon, and unfortunately, there's a lot, uh, alarming amount of evidence of it being the case. The evidence of them being remnants of a large moon goes to the following: they have very bizarre and unusual features, and uh, all looking like they are pieces of moon rather than naturally formed, um, okay, naturally formed moons. Okay. Uh, and actually formed and captured rocky and ice asteroids. The outer moons that are 100% not remnants of said large moon are Esca... Oh, I can't even say that one. I'm so sorry. Where is that? Oh, man. I, there, there he is. So you can see, look at the crashes and look at the state of that. Oh, dear. Right. So we've got Epral... Uh, where's that one? Um, oh man, this isn't easy to navigate here. Uh, uh, probably best we go looking here. So we can just search it. There he is. So, so we, oh, I never would have spotted that. So there it is. Okay. Jane. So we have this little one here. Okay. And Glodio, which is this one here, which is, by the way, weirdly mostly made from gold. Okay, nice. Um, Esker, Petten, and Eporio are the times referred to as the king and the queen of the outer moons, mostly because they are the most massive of the outer moons, as well being, in fact, the most massive of the round. That is it for the description of the star system. Also, for the rest of the unmentioned, you can simply go to... Uh, go up to them and get specific details about them but aside from that hopefully you enjoyed uh, looking through this star system also this won't be the last time I'll be creating any star system because I actually currently have one in development see you around next time thank you very much nice so yeah there we are that is the final planet of all of its moons so it's quite hard to navigate that would be my feedback is there's so many colors and stuff so that, that would be a bit of feedback I'd give for this one but yeah and other than that I do like it Quite a nice, interesting story behind the destroyed or the outer moons here, all the destroyed. You can see these moons have got a nice spherical orbit. All the ones out here are just chomped up. You know, something's definitely happened to cause that. So, pretty cool. 
So there we are. What we'll do is we'll get a line up of them all as well, just to see them all in one place. So we can see there's a lot of them. So very fancy uh, colour themes we've got going on here. But yeah, there are all the moons. So looking good. Nice. There's that gold moon again. That's really cool. Nice. But yeah, there we are, guys. So that does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system. So Emmanuel Garcia for sending this system in. Yeah, guys, if you enjoyed it, make sure to push that like button, subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 30,000 subscribers. And yeah, that will send um. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.